in areas around the country that weren't flooded out or didn't suffer from drought, there's some really good yields out there. We've had some of the best soybeans that we have ever raised, but the problem with that is it removes a lot of nutrients. So oh, now we boy. have to spend more money on fertilizer. You gotta complain about something. <laughs> well, we've, got, we've got a great price for our crop. We had a big crop. You know what? You have a lot of dollars. Well, there's a reason that you have all those resources in your hand. You're gonna need to put some of that back so you can continue to have those fantastic crops going forward. Okay, but the most important step with all this is you've gotta take a look at how many nutrients your crop is removing based on yield. So for example, on our farm, when we're getting 60 bushel soybeans, then we're pulling off, just with the grain only, approximately 48 pounds of phosphate and 84 pounds of K2O potassium. That's a lot of stuff. So just to replace what we've removed, we need about 100 pounds of MAP and roughly 150 pounds of potash. That's a lot of stuff. That's gonna cost us quite a few dollars, Darren. How can we afford that? <laughs> we can definitely afford that this year because we got a good price and that's the whole thing. Even if we didn't have a good price, we, you've gotta at <laughs> least put that back because that's what you've removed and if you don't replace it, sooner or later, it's gonna to start to affect your crop and your bottom line. I think you really have to look at it like a business. If you've got a great crop well, it is and, you a made, business. and you made a good <laughs> profit, you have to reinvest some of that profit and as your yields go up, you're gonna make more money but also your responsibility to maintain that soil goes up as well. So as you keep getting more crap off that ground, you have to increase your fertility budget all the way up. And as we look at this, many of the seed companies now, whether it's Monsanto or DuPont, they're saying by 2030, we're gonna double our average yields. Well, if we're gonna double yields, that means you're probably gonna be increasing that fertilizer budget yeah, all and, the way up. And, and keep in mind, when you, when you talk about fertilizer, I always like to use the term plant food because that's really all it is. So when you're going to raise twice the crop, you obviously have to have twice the food. And it's not cheap to do that, but if you're raising a lot of crop, you can afford to do it. Well, it's so. kind of like feeding all the kids that we've ended up uh, <laughs> accumulating over the years here, Brian. As you get more kids, that food budget goes way up. It's the same thing in your field. As you have more plants, better crops, your plant food budget goes up. Okay, so let's talk about corn just for a second. 76 pounds of phosphate is what you'll remove with a 200 bushel corn crop and about 60 pounds of K2O potassium. And that's just with the grain only. So in both cases, I've talked about corn corn and soybeans, that's just with the grain only removal. That's assuming you leave the stalks, leave all the residue out in the field. If you're removing residue, then you have to put even more plant food out there. And again, this is just to stay even. This is not to build your soil or anything. This is just a maintenance program. But the problem is over the last 20 years, a lot of us have thought, oh, I'm maintaining what I'm doing, but we're really not. We're falling short because our yields have gone way up like this. And if you look at overall fertility use in the United States in the last 10 years, it's remained flat. So eventually that starts to catch up with you. Well, when you start looking at what a two-year program is too, this is where it gets interesting because a lot of farmers that I work with will say, well, I'm putting out two years worth of fertility ahead of my corn <laughs> and I'm getting great corn yields, but my beans are suffering. Well, when you start adding up the numbers and looking at what a two-year program used to be, that's a one-year program yep. now just to raise the kind of corn yields that we're raising. Yeah, but like on our farm, we're getting about 200 bushel corn, 60 bushel soybeans in a two-year cycle just to replace what we've removed with the grain only, we need about 250 pounds of MAP and about 250 pounds of potash. That's a lot of fertility we've got to put out there every two years. So just think about it on your own farm. Are you putting that much out there? And going back to where we kind of started with this whole thing, when we're getting 60 bushel beans and 200 bushel corn, it's twice the amount of removal as 30 bushel beans and 100 bushel corn that we used to get say 15, 20 years ago. Well, and you have to start looking at things too and say, wow, this is a lot to manage for me. This is quite a responsibility. So how am I going to do it? And how am I going to place this fertilizer so I can get it into my crop? Because if I'm gonna spend a lot of money on plant nutrients, I wanna make sure I'm not wasting any dollars. Yeah, so far we basically just talked about what's removed from the soil. In terms of how you get the best availability and the best bang for your buck for that fertilizer dollar you're putting out there. Ideally, we'd like to have you banned either in a strip till form or put it on in the spring with the planter and then use highly available forms of fertilizer. So you don't wanna have all your fertilizer, a lot of your fertilizer getting tied up in the soil. For example, if you put phosphorus out there, you've got a higher pH soil, you just broadcast it out there. Most of that phosphorus is going to be tied up with all that excess calcium that's in the soil. So a lot of the dollars you spent aren't gonna go into your plant for the next crop. 
Well, that availability is so key, and whether you're using dry phosphorus and adding a veil to it to help prevent some of that tie-up, making more of it available for your crop, or you're switching to liquid products and using something like ProGerminator as your phosphorus source where it has organic proteins to prevent that tie-up. Either way, it's very important for you as you get into higher levels of nutrients, higher levels of crop production to protect that fertilizer that you're using so most of that can get into your crop and maximize your dollars. Well, once again, it's a huge thing to take a look at what your crop is actually removing and we have some charts if you want to go to agphd.com to give you some more information otherwise lots of universities have the same type of information but just make sure you're looking at how much you're removing with the crop you're producing. Well you don't want to waste any nutrients on weeds either so get weeds like our weed of the week under control. Can you identify this week's weed? 